My name is Yelena Ikonikova, as has been said already, and um, my talk is about drunken DPLL algorithms with a cut heuristic. Oh, well, at first about DPLL algorithms in general. They are designed for solving satisfiability pro problem, and uh, they're recursive algorithms. Uh, they choose a variable and a value to be investigated first, then make, make a substitution and uh, return uh, the result on the result of the recursive call on uh, the formula with that substitution. If it returns that the formula is satisfiable, so it uh, uh, it's no need for the second recursive call on the substitution with another value. So uh, the work of such an algorithm can be represented as a tree uh, of size exponential in the number of the variables. So the tree is very big and is an algorithm works uh, for a long time in uh, bad cases. So uh, we want to speed up uh, our algorithms somehow. One way to do it is uh, uh, to introduce uh, a so-called cut heuristic. It uh, decides that we will not investigate uh, some branch of the tree. Uh, we, uh, out and uh, the algorithms outputs uh, that the formula, the current formula is unsatisfiable. Uh, of course, uh, that may cause errors, but if uh, an algorithm errors rarely and uh, uh, works fastly, uh, that uh, would be very nice and uh, may be used in some applications. So, uh, DPLL algorithms with a card heuristic are characterized by three procedures. A, that chooses the variable for splitting, then B, that chooses the value to be investigated first, and C, that decides to cut the branch or not to cut. Uh, well, uh, a very brief survey. Uh, DPLL algorithms uh, were studied by, uh, for example, Eleknovich, Hirsch, Itzikson, uh, Trevisan, etc. And uh, DPLL algorithms with a cut heuristic, uh, they were studied by Itzikson and Sokolov. They, um, they studied a particular case, uh, myopic DPLL algorithms. Uh, that means that the procedures A and C uh, can see formula only with erased signs of negations. Uh, and the, ma the main result is uh, shown on the slide. Uh, so, in uh, our case... Can you show the slide? Uh, yes. I it. It's quite long, yes. <laughs> and <laughs> well, um, yes. And my case was uh, arbitrary deterministic A, B that chooses each of the Boolean values in, with equal probability. And uh, such B is called drunken procedure. And C is also drunken probabilistic. Uh, each edge of the tree is labeled by the probability to be cut off. And uh, the, this probability depends only on the level of the edge. But uh, allow uh, this modification um, has no good because uh, 
there remains a trade-off. Either the algorithms are too often or it works for a long time. And uh, I had constructed uh, hard instances for such an algorithm. Uh, and, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, they were constructed using expanders, uh, a special case of bipartite graphs, uh, so-called RDC boundary expanders uh, are defined on the slide. Uh, and uh, they can be constructed explicitly, and uh, the adjacency matrix of uh, such graphs can be used for hard instances for drunk and deep LL algorithms. We encode the system of linear equations, A multiplied by X equals B, where B is an arbitrary uh, vector. Uh, such a formula, if uh, A is non degenerate is uh, satisfiable, has a unique satisfying assignment. And so, uh, on such a formula, if uh, the algorithm uh, characterized by A, B, and C uh, works correctly with a probability greater than one minus, minus uh, upsilon, uh, then with probability at, le at least one minus uh, two upsilon uh, multiplied by uh, something uh, close to one, one minus two in the power minus omega, uh, then its running time is exponential in n. Uh, so uh, this were pro this uh, was proved in two steps. Firstly, for the case where the algorithms, where an algorithm do not use any simplification rule, and then uh, the, this result was generalized to the case um, uh, where the simplification rules of unit clause elimination and pure literals uh, were applied. And the main idea to, uh, for the proof was to find some set of subtrees in the splitting tree of the algorithm, such that each subtree is quite big, and for each of the trees, uh, the algorithm with a high probability visits um, more than half of the vertices, and then um, we uh, also notice that the probability that no such tree is visited is uh, uh, very small, almost negligible. Well, the subtrees are uh, Look, looks like uh, like uh, is shown um, the picture on the slide. Uh, we find the correct way, uh, correct path in the tree corresponding to the unique satisfying assignment, and then when we turn when we turn off that correct path. Uh, the trees uh, are, are quite big, at least an omega of n of them, and, and the number of vertices in the trees that the algorithm visits is, is omega of r. And, uh, well, that's, um, that was the main idea of the proof. 
and um, and maybe you would like to ask some questions about uh, um, more details. So I have a question. Can you show the slide? What 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 is the formula? You said it's a x is equal to b, but what are the variables we are? Or so you have this expander. How we can start the formula? Well, uh, the expander consists of two parts, and so uh, the vertices in one part correspond to uh, to the uh, va variables, and the vertices in another part correspond uh, to the equations in that system. If... Uh, so the equation just says that sum of the vertices is zero? Yes. Yeah. And so we look, just the solution which we are looking for is a zero solution? Uh, no. No, we, uh, we solve the system A multiplied by X equals to sum B, and B is an arbitrary vector, so... So B does not depend on, on the expander? B does not depend on anything. And as uh, the matrix is non-degenerate, non uh, it is invertible. invertible. So, so, so B are not variables? They are B are not variables. So for example, we can take zero, or, or, or it's not. Yes. 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 So in this case, the formula is a little bit. I mean, there will be a trivial solution to this system. Yeah, yeah, but the algorithm is not fine. That's not. Okay. Can you also tell us how you use expanded to construct the formula? And do you use some like, explicit construction of, of such expanders? So what, what happens if you just take a random graph? Uh, well, for a random graph, uh, that uh, such a construction is not possible because uh, that construction uh, corresponds to uh, bipartite graphs. And uh, so um, <coughs> if we take a random bipartite graph uh, that uh, that won't lead to uh, the similar results because of some expand properties that uh, that are used uh, for for proving the size of the subtrees that um, Oh, so you mean that it's not possible to construct the expander you need with just a suitable random random choice? It's quite strange. Usually, it's possible. No. Uh, uh, well, a random choice, uh, a random choice, of course, does n not depend on the uh, the expander, but. Um, Perhaps I didn't quite understand your question. So you need an expander with some properties. Yes. Usually, uh, uh, the most easy way to construct the graph, to prove the existence of the graph of this property, is to make some randomized uh, choice. And I understood the question that can we do this in this case? So if you are looking for some kind of type of expander, and, uh, well, can, can they be obtained by a randomized choice, or is some, you need some exclusion as such? That's what Sasha asked. Oh, well, uh, they, they perhaps can be uh, constructed by some random choice, but uh, if uh, we have um, a deterministic algorithm, 
then we we don't need um, um, randomized choice. But for my purposes, it was sufficient that such expanders exists, exist. And uh, the properties of the expanders, that we used them and not an arbitrary bipartite graph, was uh, uh, that um, in, in the case of an arbitrary bipartite graph, we couldn't prove the, the, si the estimation of the size of subtrees. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so let, let's thank Nana once.